This is Tom from Evergreen, Sweden, Heavy Metal. You're watching Made on Backstage. Now you are like one week into the tour, mm. more or less. How does it go so far? Good so far, absolutely. Then I don't know what happens on a Monday in Germany. Let's see. Uh, Monday is not my favorite day to play, to be honest, but let's see. Monday morning apocalypse. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Two days ago, there was exactly one year of after the release uh, of the storm within. Right. Right. After one year of listening to it, of playing it live, how do you feel about, about this album now? I mean, nowadays we don't listen to it. Uh, we we just play it live, you know. So yeah. uh, that's that's what we do today, and that's the fun part, I guess, as well. And just playing it live is a different adventure of the album. So. But yeah, it's an album we are very happy with and that has been very well received as well. So yeah, you feel way more confident mm. as, a, as a composer, right? Absolutely. I mean, as an artist uh, overall, I would say is uh, it's not something you're striving for anymore. It's something that you are, and when you are something, you automatically feel more confident, I guess. So yeah, this is what we do, and this is what we've been doing for over two decades now. So. We know our shit. <laughs> yeah, we're like, it's more than 20 years on stage, 10 albums. So, uh, what do you feel when you look back on all, this, all these years? Pride. I think it's an accomplishment just to be, be able to stay a band for such a long time. Even though we switched members, we are, of course, uh, still. I am the only member left, but I mean, it's still a band. And it's, it's still a band that is something to count on, you know, people, we still have people coming to our shows and buying our albums and having record labels that want to release them, so um, it's it's a very big part of our lives, of course. And after 20 years, being like you said, the only original member this whole time, what drives you to still keep going? I mean, of course not. I mean, the, the, the di dynamics of the mood and the motivation and the inspiration goes up and down, pre pretty much like life itself. Uh, but what motivates me is, it's it's not even a motivation anymore. It's we're musicians. That's what this is what we do. You know, I think it's like any other job really. But maybe, I mean, we're lucky to do our passion. Of course, uh, when you're passionate about something, it doesn't feel like a work. So, at least that's great. Yeah. So what did Evergrade do to you? What it gave you? How did it enrich your life? Everything. Everything. The only thing I've had before Evergrade was my wife, I think. But after that, I, everything else came to me through Evergrade. But I mean, of course, there are other things in life as well. But I mean, at least all of the five of us, we have seen our kids grow up. We have seen marriages and divorces and all kinds of stuff. So. Yeah, it very much contains the big part of our lives. So uh, Scandinavia has a very rich history when it comes to metal in all the uh, shapes and forms. Uh, in your opinion, how does the place of origin influence an artist? And uh, did uh, being born in Sweden influence you as an artist? I think the main thing is that we Sweden is a, is a rich country that has the opportunity to support its kids when they want to start playing and they have. We have, you know, schools and and support, as I said. Uh, not particularly that much in, in school, but after school, you know, after school hours. So, uh, and as well being fortunate enough to have parents that have income that can afford to buy and support instruments. I guess that's the biggest thing. And then I think also Swedish people are extremely determined on what they want to do. And it's a, if we set a goal, pretty much, we go, we, we go for it and we do it, uh, there's nothing else, there's no plan B and I think also Swedish musicians especially are very meticulous about how they, how we produce music. It's not something we do just because we want to drink beer or sleep with beautiful women, we play music because we want to play music. It's the way of life. Huh? It's the way of life. Yeah, it's a way of life. and. It's also, we, we love to write, and we don't write two hours a day when we're in the process of composing. We write a lot, 14, 17, 18 hours a day. So. Okay, the main theme of the Storm Within is dealing with 
the ending of relationships, the feeling of loss, mm. sudden loneliness, emptiness. Like any other real. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, how do you get yourself into this proper state of mind to write the lyrics? For this album, very much so, we created this world. We talked about it. Wouldn't it be cool if this took place in outer space somewhere on a distant, foreign, lonely planet? Uh, uh, and we started to fool around with that idea. And then we started. Would it be great if we could go to Iceland and film the the, the videos because uh, blah blah blah. And then we did that. You know. So it's all about the creative mindset. And every time we sort of we we started write write a, a theme. I can't remember exactly. I think there was the 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 distance or disconnect song. And that set the mode for the whole whole writing of the album. So every time we entered, every morning we entered and we, we entered into this world where we could be creative and where we could. Uh, I think that the lyrics for Discipline is a very good example because for me this song is so easily put me in this mood. It's a, like a coldness, yeah, uh, cold separation, and like a longing for something. Yeah. It is a very, a very good uh, job at, at this. No, thank you. <laughs> so do you consider yourself to be empathetic? That's my strong side. I think I can put myself in pretty much any feeling and understand how it would be for me if I was in that position. So my empathic side is, is uh, my strong card when it comes to the lyrics and, and, and the mindset, mindset of you know, what we want to create. When you talk with fans around the world, they must often share stories about your uh, lyrics impacting their lives, right? Yeah. How, how does it make you feel? Uh, I'm just happy that my lyrics seem to be able to help people or comfort them or let them know that they're not alone. Often that's what people say. They, you know, the music and the lyrics have helped them through this or that. And it's, uh, it's mind-blowing really that what you write at home end up on somebody else's CD player or whatever and, and uh, it helps them get through tough times of the day. It's a blessing. It's fantastic. Do you believe music can be therapeutic? And was it ever therapeutic for you? Of course, yes, it still is. I would say that all of our music is my own therapy. But like uh, outside of Perry Red, for example. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, like that, could you, for example, point to an album that was uh, with you when the times were more tough? Yeah, I mean, I think um, a, mom a Momentary Lapse of Reason is one of the albums that I've listened to a lot during all times and during all emotions, during all the, all the mindsets you can imagine. So I would say that, one, that is one of the most happening. Then this album is singing with, you, with your wife and also your daughter, it's in a choir. Mm -hmm. How did this uh, album become such a family project? Yeah, I mean, it's just natural. We need a female voice. Yes, we're friends with Floor as well. Uh, but uh, Karina's been on every album, so it's sort of a thing. We have a small fan, we have a fan base that likes only her stuff too, you know. So, so uh, with Selena, it's uh, been a natural progression. She's a musician herself. And, we need her, her and a lot of her friends to do the ending parts of Distance, for instance. So for you, what are the uh, ingredients in a recipe for a perfect Everyday album? Well, there must be feeling. We must be singing about something that means something to us. Even if it's a creative story or uh, whatever, we need to feel it, all of us. We need to be in that zone and after that everything comes naturally. It's like this vision that you described. Yeah. And the moon. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when we have that, that sort of lays down the rules for what we're going to create and for how it's going to sound. So. And from this theme grows the whole concept for our Absolutely. And it can, be, it can be just two chords. And it's like, boom, that's it. We're going with that. And then all of a sudden you have 10 songs out of that. I mean, not overnight, but. <laughs> Okay, the last question I always like to ask is what are your musical guilty pleasures? Something your fans might be surprised that you like. That I like? Yeah. I like Bach a lot. And we, I mean, me and Jonas, we listen a lot to pop. We write pop for other people. Uh, so I guess that we love Justin Bieber a lot. Oh, really? <laughs>